Hello everyone, Vito's a fair to back again and you are looking at Kickstarter and I'm gonna try something a little different again for the Kickstarter report. I'll try to keep it quick. Start off with the Venexiana Dark Playing Cards by Half Moon Playing Cards. Three days left, it is well funded. And quick look at what you're going to get. There is the Master Edition and the Revealed Edition. One is silver, one is gold. Uh, they've got numbered seals as you can see. There's the back design on one of them and that, that's the Master Edition and this one is the Revealed Edition. The difference is in the faces, you can see the pips there and the ace, uh, are the court cards. The Master Edition, they have masks and they're hiding stuff like this card. And then the other one, no masks, and as you can see, you're revealing a card to you. And I mean, if we continue on, uh, see, he's revealing a bit more skin, a bit more booby. <laughs> uh, I got no complaints with that. And uh, definitely the Queen of Pleasure, that's for sure. And I mean, as you can see, there's all sorts of stuff. It's really well done. Then we got the Sisu, I think that's how you pronounce it, Four Beasts. Playing cards. The red deck has been unlocked. So now you can get the red deck and the blue deck. Well funded. 10 days still to go. Boom. There you go. The back design. Really cool. This is the second attempt. The first one. It didn't quite make it. That was some time ago. There is free shipping worldwide. Each one of the suits, as you can see, is representing uh, something different. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know how well it's, it's focused. It's hard to tell on a little screen versus a computer screen. But the spades represent the Azure Dragon, the hearts the Vermilion Bird, clubs, the Black Tortoise, and diamonds, the White Tiger. Beautiful aces as you can see. And just beautiful artwork throughout. I'm glad this one is finally funded because it looks awesome and definitely approved from last time. Then there is the Bicycle Blue Collar and Bicycle White Collar playing cards from Collectible Playing Cards. Well funded, 20 days still to go. There is a White Collar deck which is very clean and professional looking. And then you got the Blue Collar which is kind of dirty looking as you can see. As it would be because these are your people that are working hard and they're dirty. You got your you know, blacksmiths and your carpenters and your welder. Uh, electricians and whatnot, all the people are getting down and dirty every day at work, and then your white collars sitting at the office every day. <laughs> so it's a nice contrast between uh, uh, kind of dirty and clean. Some nice, cool, kind of vintage looking back designs, as you can see. Completely custom artwork. Probably one of the best decks they've done so far. And it's looking pretty cool. And then we got the Bicycle Leafback Playing Cards Gold Edition from PlayingCards.net, aka Gambler's Warehouse. It just funded six days, still to go. Boom, there you go. It's the same as previous Leafback decks that came out. I think they might have been USB-C uh, released, I can't recall. But uh, the only difference is, you can see, they've added gold to the back design, so green and gold, and red and gold, standard faces. Basically, another recolor by PlayingCards.net, as they've done with the dragon backs and the skulls. And so they'll be doing with other decks as well. But it's still pretty cool. Moving along here, hopefully. Why is this not working? <laughs> We got the Bicycle Metal Rider Back Playing Cards by Collectible Playing Cards and Max at MaxPlayingCards.com. Very well funded, nine days still to go. It's a deck that has a metallic look to the backs and the faces. It's still a Rider Back. And apparently, there is this limited edition engraved metal card you can get. Free to all backers of $60 or more. Or you can add on for $5 each or free for $12. Hmm, I might consider that if I'm actually backing this one. I'm not even sure. Um, 
So yeah, it's pretty cool. Very metallic as you can see. You definitely check it out. It's you know fairly standard artwork, but it's been it, colored and made to look metallic and just looks really cool. So definitely check that one out before it's too late. Then there is, uh, I'll mention quickly, this. Orbiter, I don't know if you can see it or not. Boom. I'll try to zoom in there a little bit. It's a the Orbiter playing card display by Scott King of, I believe, Crooks and King, I believe it is. 33% fun, it's 32 days to go. It's got a really big goal, I don't know if it's going to make it. But it's a pretty cool display case if you're into that stuff for cards. I know a lot of people are. Next up, Defunct Dorm Playing Cards by Roman Kotiv. It's already well funded, 23 days still to go. There's a black deck and a white deck, as you can see. Lots of uh, skulls and very ornate looking artwork, as you can see. The black deck is known as the Nox. The white deck is known as the Diaz. Or Dies. <laughs> I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. It's kind of an odd spelling. Uh, pretty ornate looking pips and court cards and everything, you know, they're just heads. And that's what you get. I'll quickly look at the white deck a little bit. I apologize if I'm going through a little bit fast, but I'm trying to make sure I don't take 40 minutes in a video. <laughs> also, uh, this guy is a creator of the uh, previously the Demon deck, and there was also a limited edition of that, which you can, I believe, add on for like 10 bucks. If you want. Next up, Amigos playing cards by Victor Kin, which is a weird name. 74% funded, seven days to go. I am flabbergasted how much fun in this uh, trio of decks has gotten because I didn't expect it to get that much funding. Uh, there is three different decks, each designed by a different person. It will cost you $14 for one deck. Uh, I'm going to look at them right here. $25 for 236 for free. This is one, it's got kind of a standard looking faces with pips, but everything's customized. Lots of line work as you can see. The second one has got a blue color scheme and a space theme to it as you can see. And the third one is an orange back design, kind of simple, with cats. And the aces and court cards as you can see this feature letters. I don't know what the number cards look like on any of these because that's all they're showing us. So three different colors, three different themes, three different decks, three different artists, and pricey. <laughs> Next up we got the metal playing cards, titanium, stallion, brass steak, and a copper deck once again by Jeff who is associated with Home Run Games. Currently uh, Funded with 18 days still to go. There is paper versions of the cards printed by USB-C, but they're exactly the same as the previous campaign that had copper and stainless steel decks. So if you got those already and you're not interested in the $125 metal decks, then this is a pass. So we won't get into that. The code cards and everything is fairly standard. Next up we have the Arcanum. Playing cards, which are through Gambler's Warehouse. It was previously on Kickstarter briefly by the creator and then he cancelled because it wasn't getting funded. It's right now 93% funded, 25 days to go. A little bit pricey again, but as you can see, beautiful artwork, highly detailed, nicely done. The inside of the box is beautiful as you can see. There's your back design, a little bit odd, but it's not bad. It's skulls with a butterfly and lots of ornate details. And just, it's pretty cool. Court cards are very nice. Very ornate, as you can see. Not something you expect with a deck that has skulls all over it. Very interesting. Moving along, there is the Backers Playing Cards by Diana Veronica. 10% funded, 24 days to go. This one is not going to happen. <laughs> it's a deck based on Kickstarter projects, and that could be an issue in itself because I'm not sure there's too many Kickstarter creators who want somebody else profiting 
or benefiting from their projects. And this is a person who says the uh, this deck has facts and tips on Kickstarter projects. And this is her first project. What right does she have to give out tips on Kickstarter projects when she's never created a project in her life up until now? 3,000 pound goal, it's not going to reach it in my opinion. The bicycle branding is as she, yeah, okay, it's the same deck, but there's a bicycle branded box. That is if she hits 200% of her funding, 6,000 pounds, ain't going to happen. So be lucky if she gets funded. Um, and the back design, we don't know what that looks like. Here's some of the faces though. Uh, green writing, obviously, similar to the Kickstarter font with some pips in black and red, all sorts of facts and figures and stuff on the cards. There's been a deck like this previously on Kickstarter. It did not do good. It went down in flames, basically. It just failed badly. And this one's going the same direction. It's just not somebody, but something people want on playing cards or something people are looking for cards with. Uh, on top of that, there's no back design posted. The original back design looked like a blatant ripoff of the Virtuoso deck, except with different colors. Uh, admittedly, um, she, she didn't rip it off, but it was just very similar, very coincidental, but it looked like it was a ripoff. Um, it was slightly, slightly different, but it was too similar. I didn't even notice the differences at first. And then we got the... Bicycle 8-bit traditional 5200 playing cards by Kobe Pyle at Home Run Games. 49% funded, 22 days to go. It's slowly getting there. I don't know if people really want another 8-bit bicycle deck, but boom, there you go. Lots of green colors on the backs and the faces. Outside of that, it's basically the same artwork as the previous decks, which is a little bit disappointing. But I do like that they kept the court cards looking, I think, yes, they, they kept the court cards looking standard instead of having... Uh, some of the goofy characters they had in the original decks. Apparently there's only a thousand being printed by the USBC. Apparently they got in there on the, in the finish, by the way, Bicycle Finish and Magic Arcade Finish. So I'm not sure what that means. Uh, there is this limited edition tuck case, which is pretty cool. I used to have an Atari way back when. That was my first gaming system. I don't remember if it was a 2600 or a 5200, but I'm all over this. I like this. Also, they're throwing in, if you want, a stainless steel plate, which is pretty cool. A, a card you can get that's stainless steel. They're doing a lot of this with the home run cards because of that other metal deck, obviously. And a sleeve. I think I still have one of those kicking around. It's pretty cool, though. And you can actually get a brick of all 12 of their decks, including the mini deck. So that's a good way to get them if you haven't got them in the past. Four, as you can see, have custom backs, or different uh, unique backs, and four of them have pretty standard backs in different colors, plus the new one in green, right up here, <laughs> wherever it is. So, I mean, it's interesting. If you like that kind of stuff, go for it. And I apologize that the video takes a while, but I'm trying something new here today. Next up, Bicycle Rongo Rongo, third attempt on Kickstarter. It's slowly getting there. This is by Matifo. 70% funded, 22 days to go. The theme is the Easter Island. If you're not sure where that is, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm sure most people have heard of it, but they probably couldn't point it out on a map. It's Polynesian though. The court cards feature art from Polynesian tribal masks, as you can see. Printed by USPC. Um, the blue deck here is uh, known as the gold deck. That's the main deck that they're selling right now. Eventually, I think they plan on having add-ons for a black deck and this gilded gold colored deck. But I don't think they've added those on yet. Actually, it says here you can get free bicycle branded decks, any color, plus two pairs of dice for 46 bucks. That is risky because. They haven't reached their goal yet, which is only $13,000. Not nearly enough to produce 7,500 decks. Nowhere near enough. And they're offering you the option. 
it's not good. I don't recommend this one at all if that's the route they're taking. So stay away. Um, then there's also this one, a limited edition, Mori, or however you pronounce that, which has a different box, but everything inside the box is the same. It's just a limited edition box. Then there is the Lux Playing Cards by Jackson Fife, because we needed another deck called the Lux Playing Cards. Um, try this. Camera seems a little bit crooked. This one, 13% uh, funded, 28 days to go. It doesn't look like it's going to make it. A very simple, uh, unappealing back design. Uninteresting back design. Blue and yellow with a little red in the center. And outside of that, you see the box, which is very plain. And the Ace of Spades, which is also very plain and uninspiring, unimaginative. Just, it, this deck, this whole thing looks like it was designed by... 15 year old or something like that maybe even not maybe a 13 year old i don't know it, either way it seems like it's a kid probably a youtuber and it's just it's just not there it's not doing it for me and i couldn't really recommend this one i mean the prices are fine eight dollars for one deck is pretty good but it's not gonna fund at this rate then there's the fine line playing cards, very well funded, over 400%, with 61 hours to go. It's a very interesting deck of cards. I don't think it's extremely playable or usable, especially for Magic or anything like that, because it has no pips, no numbers, no letters. It's completely custom. But this is what you get for the faces. You gotta, they actually make you figure out what each suit and what each value is like this one's obviously a four because it's got four prongs on the fork this one corners of the earth there's four corners of the earth this one you got four legs that's obviously a four and this one you got four figures on horses that's four so these are your four fours each one has a different suit one maybe animal themed one is uh obviously words as you can see because there's another one here is drag i'm not sure what that one is these could be your aces uh, and then you got this one. I don't know. You, they basically make it so that you can figure out what each suit is. Somehow. And figure out what each value is. Without actually spelling it out for you. So it's different. It's unique. It's interesting. This is your back design. Very dark. And kind of weird. And they don't really highlight that a whole lot. They don't really show you a whole lot of pictures of the back design. But it's definitely interesting and different and collectible. And that's a pretty interesting box. <laughs> then there is the Bicycle Russian Folk Art Playing Cards, which I really like, by Natalia Silver. I should mention the fine line cards are by Adam Forbeers and Adam Thompson. I'm guessing uh, they could be known as the Adams. <laughs> that's what I'm calling them. Anyways, this other one, Folk Art Deck, is by Natalia Silver. 65% funded, 13 days to go. Slowly getting there. I don't know if it's going to quite make it, but hopefully it does. It's a beautiful deck of cards, as you can see, using all sorts of Russian imagery. Back design, similar to a tally hole circle back. Uh, it's kind of a flower. It is a flower, I guess. It looks beautiful. I like it. And jokers are cool. Kind of funny. Bears. <laughs> um, Russian bears, I guess. It's, that's, uh, that's actually funny. It's pretty cool. And... All the cards completely custom, beautiful. Reminds me a bit of a Emmanuel Jose deck of how she intertwined the art with the pips and everything. And just really well done. I really well done. I couldn't recommend it enough. Just go check it out. Moving along, we have uh, the Kingdoms of Erden playing cards. Um, which are by Tim Olinger. 16 days to go, 79% funded. It's very slowly getting their $1,000 goal, and they still haven't hit it. Problem being, it's basically the exact same thing as a previous deck, which barely funded. And the only difference is the court cards have different poses, I think defensive poses instead of uh, offensive poses, I guess. It's just, 
it's not enough for me to spend money buying a second deck when it's basically the same thing. If there was a different color back design, it would have helped. I would have probably jumped in. Probably more people would have. But at this rate, not really feeling it. Uh, next up, the retro deck from Pocono Modern and Craig Kalashian. 53% funded with 53 hours to go. That's not a good sign. It's too bad, too. Um, they do got this retro look to them, as you can see. Two different decks. This is your back design right here. Pretty interesting. Lots of uh, geometrical shapes. The faces, you got white faces, and then you got orange and gray faces with white borders. Same back design. Uh, two different color boxes as well. A dark and a light. Um, I like it. It's pretty cool, but it just did not make it. It's got $10,000. It's barely over the halfway mark. It would have been enough to print one deck, but they decided to try two decks. Didn't quite happen. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to happen at this rate. Then there is the Grimoire series, part one, by the Edgy Brothers. These are going to be printed by Expert Point Cards. It is funded with 13 days to go. There you go. Uh, scary court cards, <laughs> kind of. And there's your back design and your the front of the box. Pretty cool, although the borders on the backs don't match the faces, but that's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. This guy's kind of weird. Obese monster. Um, there is a second deck that they're trying to unlock. This is the Necromancer deck, and the one they're trying to unlock is... Which is it? Um, this one, the Ele Elemental Magic, which is pretty cool. It'll be unlocked if they hit $12,000. Ooh, check out that baby. <laughs> Very colorful. Again, the borders don't match the backs, but not a big deal. Um, where are we at? We're at $8,000. I don't know if they're going to unlock this one or not, but if not, don't be another campaign. They've got a bunch of decks in this series. I forget how many. So, it's going to be around for a while. And then next up, we got the Wizard of Oz playing cards by Eric Dahlman and Albino Dragon. It is funded. Five days to go. Two different decks. Um, unlimited version and a 75th anniversary limited edition. Concepts pending approvals, it says. Uh, this is the unlimited deck. It's got kind of a wooden brown color to it. And black and white colors. Fitting of the colors in the movie. And then the 75th anniversary deck has got white and silver faces. With colored court cards, again, fitting of the movie. It's nice that they have the contrast. One is black and white, and the other one is color, basically. Um, I like it. It's not too bad. I wouldn't mind backing it myself, except that, unfortunately, they only ship to Americans. Uh, apparently, people who are outside the U.S. are too much of a burden for them. So they can kiss my ass. I'm not going to back their projects. I, I can't back, I mean, I could back the projects and have it shipped to someone in the States. I've done that with a couple of the previous decks. But, if they don't care about me, why should I care about them? If you're international, unless a deck really appeals to you, don't even bother, is my opinion. They won't, I, I mean, I understand some of these decks, they got issues where, regarding licensing, so they can't just ship it to everyone in the world. But there's... I mean, one of their previous decks, the Dragon Tome deck, is available for pre-order on the website. But unless you're in the States, they won't ship it to you. That's that. Next up. Where are we here? I apologize. You got the Bicycle Phenographic Playing Cards by Magic Trick Store, aka Collectible Playing Cards. I'm not sure why he's using a different account, different name. I don't know if it's just a fact, uh, because his previous decks haven't been funny that much, that so he's trying a new identity, or uh, if it's just to try and have more than one project at the same time. I really don't know. It's currently 28% funded with 30 days to go. It's very slow to get there. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not even sure what the theme is or what the name means. Phenographic, there you go. <laughs> um, there's your back design basically. It's not bad. Lots of details. Pretty ornate. 
And the face is completely custom. I like the Ace of Spades, really cool. And the court cards aren't bad, they're very uh, traditional looking. They even got the Suicide King in there. So it's it's not bad, it's not the greatest deck of cards in the world, it's not the most custom. I'm not a fan of a black Joker in a white deck, I've seen that in previous decks from other projects and it just, it stands out like a sore thumb, it's just, it's not cool, you know. Uh, if you want to do that, at least put a white border on it like they did with the court cards. Then it would fit in a little bit better, but I don't know. <laughs> that's my opinion. Um, so that's that one. Next up, Guitar Gods. Playing cards by Guitar World Magazine. Never really heard of them. Apparently they've got lots of subscribers, but very few of them like playing cards. 4% funded 25 days to go. I'd be surprised if this one makes it. Um, not very appealing to apparently their customers and not very appealing to card collectors. This is what you get. The faces have different images from their magazines. Magazine covers basically. Apparently they had difficult finding queens for some reason. And the back design is right there. Yeah, that's what you get. I'm not even 100% sure if it is mirror image or not. I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure actually. Trying to figure out whether or not it is. No, it's not. It's not a mirror image of that design, which is completely ridiculous and unnecessary. I can tell because here we got two diamonds in this corner, and over here in this corner, you got three diamonds and a spade. Why is it so difficult to make it mirror image? I don't get it. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's that. Boring. Next up, another boring one The Simplex Playing Cards by Brainy Banana. And it has no description, it just says, buy Brainy Banana. 13% funded, 28 days to go. I highly doubt this one will make it. Uh, here's your back designs. It's just a bunch of pips. We know how I feel about decks that have just pips in the back designs. At least it's mirror image, but it's, it's stupid. Why would you do this? It's just unappealing. And then the faces, they have no pips. That's why they're all on the back design, because... They didn't put them on the faces. The faces, they're blank. They just got a pip in the corner for the index, and either uh, a light black or a red. And then they spell out King, Ace, Queen, Zack. The number cards, it gets worse. Check out what they do with the number cards. Hopefully you can see this. Nine. Nine. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Six. So they basically put the number, and then the rest of the word. <laughs> They, basically, they replaced the, they, they put out the word, 7 or 6 or 8, and they replaced the first letter with a number. Very creative. Yeah, I'm sure this deck is going to do very well. <laughs> it's not very good. I don't recommend it. I just thought I'd show it to you. It's got a perfect title, though, Simplex. <laughs> Next up, Bicycle Revenge playing cards by... Jose Correa, or, Jer or Jose Correa, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce it, 15% funded 28 days to go, not going to happen, it's not very appealing, um, uh, there's the back of the box, it's a castle for some reason, uh, court cards, pretty small images, why is there such massive borders, this is not even a jumbo index deck, it's just ridiculous, each one of the aces has a different castle on it, and, as you can see, all of the cards have the same red colors. It's annoying. How am I supposed to tell the difference between a spade and a heart, a club and a diamond, when they're so similar, and the colors are the same? Not good. The back design, more of the same. Red and burgundy colors, a one-way design, awful one-way design, unnecessary one-way design. That just does not look appealing at all. The jokers are the best part. <laughs> They're pretty cool. That's it. The rest, lame. All the number cards, they got no pips. They got different images. Uh, and they're all basically the same thing. The eights have a bow and arrow, which is that. Sevens have seals. Nines, or sixes, so I have these uh, little castles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not very attractive at all. Next up, Vintage Vampires, Bicycle Playing Cards by Nat Iwata. 
87% funded, 13 days to go. It's Sid Fund. It's got vampires, including Dracula. Here's your back design. Pretty colorful, interesting. And your court cards, very nicely done. Lots of detail. I like it. I'm not familiar with most of these characters. Just Dracula, basically. And I think this one looks familiar from a movie. Count Orlock. The rest, I'm not really familiar with. But beautifully done. I do like it. And there is a unlimited deck and also a limited edition deck with foil accents, which is just a different box. Next, Merit's Bed Undefiled Playing Card. 0% funded, $10 pledge, 22 days. Yeah, it's not going to get funded. Basically, it's a deck of cards to help build healthy relationships and desires through erotic talk. There is basically basic cards, semi-explicit cards, and explicit cards. There's no images in this project, no idea what it looks like, but from what I can tell, it's a fairly standard deck of cards. Well, it's got indexes anyways. It can be used as, as a deck of cards, from what I can tell. Enough about that one. <laughs> uh... Next up, the Usai Classic Limited Edition Playing Cards by Usai. Just launched today, and it's 78% funded with 27 days still to go. Beautiful decks. I like it. I highly recommend it. This is the last decks in their six deck series. Whether this means they're going to create a new series of decks or any more decks after this, I don't know. Is this their last decks ever? I don't know. I hope not. Because they're awesome. But here we go. They're classic looking decks. Beautifully designed. Beautiful chord cards that look like they're right out of some European decks. A blue deck and a red deck available. Nice jokers. Just very nicely done. I like these cards as well. They're... Um, Standard number cards that they usually use. Pretty cool. Beautiful back designs with a nice classic vintage type look to them. I love them. And I highly recommend checking them out. There is also, you can get a 24 karat gold gilded deck in the classic limited edition red deck. And there is a silver, sterling silver gilded deck you can get in the blue version. The red version is a limited edition deck. The blue version is the standard version. In case you're wondering. Uh, I'm not sure if it says how many are being printed of each. So it says somewhere. Whatever, that's what you get. Go check it out. Next up, Bicycle Nightmare of Oz. Playing cards by 4PM Designs. 40% funded, 36 days to go. It's slowly getting there, I don't know. Right now, if it's going to make it, whoops, there you go. Uh, it's got a lot of details and color to the faces. Almost looks like it was designed by the guys of uh, the, uh, the Cardissons, <laughs> because it's similar to their decks. The index is a little bit hard to read, but I think they're improving that. Your back design, a big Z in the middle for Oz, O-Z basically. Uh, very interesting. Look at the ace there and the back design. Highly detailed, but it's almost an overkill. Court cards featuring the wizard, tin man, tin woodman really, scarecrow, cowardly lion, the four witches, and other characters I've never heard of including TikTok, Calico, Jack Pumpkinhead, and Hungry Tiger. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently inspired by their books. I mean, it's a pretty cool deck, completely custom. I will say that sometimes too much of a good thing is not a good thing. And that's what you're seeing in this deck. Just a little bit too much detail. Completely custom is good. Overly custom, not so much. But it's pretty cool nonetheless. And next up we got the Grain Deck. Second edition playing cards by Ashley Acton, a.k.a. The Cardist, right here on YouTube. You might want to check out his channel. He does a lot of reviews as well. I'm sure most of you have already. 33% funded, 17 days to go, not looking good, I don't think it's going to get funded. 
Uh, this time around, it's supposed to be printed by the expert playing card company. Last time, it's printed by uh, Ivory, uh, Ivory Printing, I believe it was. It's some British company. And it's a pretty... So, uh, anyway, as I was saying, this one's got a uh, much improved side opening tuck case from the previous deck. The back design is basically the same, but with much thinner borders. Looks pretty cool. Um, the faces are fairly similar. I do believe the Ace of Spades, as you can see right there. And the Jokers are different, or at least one Joker, there's one Joker in the deck, and I believe it's different. Uh, the court cards, some improvements, but overall fairly similar, with a similar color scheme, although it is a custom color scheme. It looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not a, a massive fan of the custom pips, but they are pretty cool. They're different, as you can see, hopefully. And that is that. Next deck on our look is the Phrasebook Playing Cards by Lingo and Keaton White. Currently 40% funded, 22 days to go. I'm not sure this one's going to make it very far. The um, Every card has a different common phrase on it, like that was delicious, and it tells you a translation, and they also pronounce it for you. Estaba delicioso. Uh... Good morning, buenos dias. Do you speak English? Parlez-vous anglais? Uh, here's your back design. Apparently there's two different ones. They're basically very simple diamond back designs in different colors. And some of the court guards, beer and water, cerveza, agua, hot gold, foid and sod. How much is it? Cuando es cuesta? I think that's what it is. Yes, Quando's Cuesta. Do you have any vacancies? Etc, etc. And it's in different languages. There's Spanish, there's French, probably Italian, all sorts of different languages. So it's good if you travel and you need some translations. But outside of that, it's not very interesting. I like the pips, the custom pips. Very cool. I'd like to see that on some other deck. That was better. Uh, and they have numbers in Spanish and French in different, in two, uh, on the Jokers. There's a Tux, there's a Spanish deck and a French deck, so that's pretty cool. There's a Spanish translation deck and a French translation deck that tell you exactly how to pronounce the words and, and everything. It's pretty interesting, but it's a little bit... It's not exactly the type of thing most people would like to see on a deck of cards, in my opinion. That is that, though. Is it going to get funded? I don't know. I don't think so, but we'll see. Next up, one that's surprising me a little bit. Notable Women in Computing card deck by Jessica Dickinson Goodman. Say that name three times fast. <laughs> it's a very long name. It's well funded. Over 400% funded. Seven days to go. That being said, it's only $13,000. Um, whoops. Basically, every card has an image of a woman with her name and some information on what she has done in computer science. I didn't know there was 52 or 54 women that were notable in computer science, uh, let alone a couple, but, I mean, good for them. No offense. I, I got nothing against that. That's great. But it's not a deck that appeals to me, and I'm surprised that it's appealing to a whole lot of people, for that matter. Uh, it's just not that exciting. Uh, as you can see... It looks like they put it by make playing cards or something with a simple tuck case with windows on them. The back design, I believe, is this. It's just a woman, and it says notable women in computing. Yay. Very exciting back design. <laughs> and these are uh, oh, only 10 bucks each. Whatever. Um, so that's that. There's a couple more to tell you about, I believe. There is the... Monster Pinup Girls playing cards. 86% funded, 4 days to go. It's going to be very close. I don't know if it's going to fund or not. It's got some very nice art, but I haven't seen a whole lot of pinup girls do very well on Kickstarter, especially with monster themes, which 
always seems to be the case with pinup girls on Kickstarter. Uh, they're okay. I, I got no complaints with it. Look at that invisible woman. That's kind of sexy. <laughs> um, I'll try to find the back design. There's your back design. It's not anything extraordinary, but it's all right. And you get enough skirt socks, so I <laughs> can't complain of that too much, even though she's got hooves for feet. But um, it's just not something that appeals to that many people, but it's doing all right. Next up, the Americana deck by Culture Cards Company. It's just funded. It was 60 hours to go. It was a very short campaign. Very small goal, $350, and it almost didn't fund. There's a red deck and a blue deck. Apparently, there's a stretch goal for two deck, a tuck sleeve for $500. It's not going to reach that. <laughs> Apparently, there's a bordered version and an unbordered version. Why that's even necessary, I don't know. Here's where you can put the faces, though. It's a half a deck of cards, a half a card, and then it has information like New York Stock Exchange and... Bitcoin Center and etc. etc. It's not very exciting, not very appealing, just like the previous decks, um, but it is what it is. <laughs> and then there is the Go Cassé uh, cards and game. It's a geocaching themed game by Indie Martin. It's well funded with seven days to go, over 200% funded. It's primarily a geocaching game which I don't know a whole lot about but it does have indexes on it that allow you to use it as a standard deck of cards so I figured I'd mention it. It's doing pretty well nonetheless. Then there's the Toss H suited game. It's an online game by Dennis King. 0% funded with $0 pledge. 15 days to go it's dead. Uh, it's basically a deck that has H suits. You can actually get the deck of cards along with it. It's got I forget how many cards in it. Uh, 80 something, I think. And it's $25, and you get a free double deck of cards, which are already made, and free passes to play the online games. Only ships to the US. Not very exciting. As you can see, you got your four standard suits in black and red, and then you got four custom ones in gold and purple. How exciting. You can actually get this deck for only $11.99, I believe it is, on their website. Or you can pay $25 bucks for it on Kickstarter. And it's just not going to get there. It's a failure. Another failure is the dry erase cards. Make your own game customizable, as it says. Customizable, actually. By Dio. Samaru. 0% funded, $0 pledge, 26 days to go. From what I can tell, it's a freaking plastic deck of cards. Anyone can do this. Pull out a plastic deck of cards, get a dry erase marker, boom, done. Why would you spend any money, $15 they want, to get this deck of cards? It's unfathomable. And I don't, I can't believe it's even on Kickstarter. It's ridiculous. Why would Kickstarter allow this? Oh, and apparently there's Five different optional backs that you can get. If you're going to put a deck on Kickstarter, figure out what the hell you're going to put for a back design before you put it on there and go, oh, pick and choose whatever one you want. That's very imaginative. Give me a break. Anyways, moving on. And... Let's see if there's any more very quickly. I don't think there is any more. I think that's it for Kickstarter. Um... I'll very quickly get to deck starter. Oops. First of all, I want to mention that Kickstarter has finally improved. Kickstarter now gives you the option of choosing a shipping to your own country. So no longer do you have to pay X amount of dollars international shipping to Canada or China or anywhere in the world. It's X amount of dollars to Canada, X amount of dollars to Denmark, X amount of dollars to Japan, etc, etc. Awesome. I like that. Finally, no longer do I have to pay $15 shipping to Canada and the same person, uh, somebody in Japan paying the same amount of money. I'll pay whatever it costs to Canada. In some cases, it's 5 bucks. One of them was 5 bucks, and it was 13 bucks. Whatever. 
and then other people will pay fifteen dollars or whatever to ship to Japan. It doesn't bother me. I like that. Thank you, Kickstarter, for finally allowing people to pledge for shipping by region instead of or by country instead of by U.S. or international. It's a long time coming. Now, Dexter has one deck on it. This one right here, the Revelation deck. Currently at $4,800 out of a $7,000 goal. Eight days left. Very slow to fund. Uh, it's on crowd tilt. I don't know if Dan and Dave and Justin Buck have thrown any money into it yet. Or if they will. It's got a very cool theme to it. I like it based on the medieval Nidaros Cathedral in Norway. That's it right there. Very cool court cards. They're pretty cool court cards with a, kind of a religious theme. The back design, very nice. The Ace of Spades, really nice. Uh, the box is cool. There's actually t-shirts and a cuts available. And printed by the Expert Point Card Company, surprisingly, and not USB-C. And it actually is specifically lists that as a pre-order at the bottom. Pretty cool. I got no complaints with it. You can get one for eight bucks plus shipping. U.S. shipping is five dollars. International shipping sixteen dollars. You can actually get two decks for ten bucks. That's fifty percent savings. The one deck deal is twenty percent savings, and it's eighteen dollars international for two decks. Six dollars. US for one deck. What more could you ask for? Five dollars for two decks plus shipping. Okay, so it works out to fourteen dollars each with shipping, but it's still a pretty good deal. I like it. Go check it out, definitely. Let's get this pledged. Uh, let's get this funded. It's pretty awesome. That is that. I'll see you next time. Hopefully you like this new format. I apologize if it's like fifteen minutes long very much. But that's what happens when there's like 30 decks on Kickstarter. See you next time.